Hey guys, what's up? It's Jameson Beats from Elevate Studios and some time back I did a series of videos on getting great sounding drums in FL Studios and I used FPC. At the end I said that I could probably get better sounding drums with Addictive Drums or Easy Drummer and that's because they put so much effort into getting great samples and a whole lot of samples into just one drum piece and the quality of samples they use is better than what you would have in FPC. Also, the simulations of things like the room and the simulation of the overhead mics is way more realistic than what you would get from trying to simulate it yourself. So because of that, I know that I should be able to get even better sounding drums with Easy Drummer and Addictive Drums. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Easy Drummer, um, well, Superior Drummer and Addictive Drums and I'm going to show you how you would track them out so that you can send each individual track to a mixer channel in FL Studio and then you can add effects and you can mix it how you would like instead of having to just take the entire drum sound from Easy Drummer or Addictive Drums and then you cannot really tweak it so much as you would like. First off we have Addictive Drums. Before we even get into tracking out our kit from Addictive Drums, I would like to suggest one thing. Set the keyboard mapping in Addictive Drums to GM, please. Addictive Drums sounds great, but who want to map out their drums in that super convoluted way they have? To change the mapping, click this little question mark here and then map window. Change the map preset to GM, now we can go back to tracking. Once you have a kit you want to track, you can go to edit or you can click on kit. We have this mixer at the bottom of the interface with tracks for each sound. If you click this arrow facing downwards on each track, you will see three options. Master sends the signal to the master channel in Addictive Drums. Separate Out sends the signal to a designated output for it in the FL Studio wrapper. And then the third option does both. I always just choose separate out. Once you choose separate out for all the channels you want to track out, it's a good idea to mute the master channel. Things like FX and sometimes linked sounds can play through the master and that will drive you crazy because you might not even know where they're coming from. Now we need to assign our outs from addictive drums to the mixer in FL Studio. Click on the gear at the top of the FL wrapper for addictive drums and then go to wrapper settings then processing and at the bottom we have connections. I usually leave the kick to the default master out, then I route the snare to 1, the hats to 2, the toms to 3, overheads to 4 and the ambient mics or the room mics I route them to 5. You can route the boss to 6 if you would like but a lot of the drum presets in addictive drums themselves don't even use the boss so you don't really need it. Now if you track addictive drums to track 1 on your mixer, the kick will be on channel 1, the snare on channel 2, your hats on channel 3 and so on. Be aware that the sliders in addictive drums now they're not going to control anything but the mute button will work and you can still edit the ratio between things like snare top and snare bottom and so on with the controls in addictive drums it's a good idea to save addictive drums as a favorite plugin in that state so it'll always open out with the routing settings that we choose next up superior drummer the process is almost the same you select the kit that you want to use then you go to the mixer tab at the bottom of each channel is an output there are 32 outputs but in effect you really just get 16 stereo outputs i set all my kick samples to output 1 2 and my snare to 3 4 and so on then i go into wrapper settings and i route the outputs just like with addictive drums after you route with superior drummer you can still control the mix with the mixer inside of the vst itself which is good since the mic signals like snare top and snare bottom are separate in the mixer. Again, we will save the VST as a favorite with the state that it is in now so that whenever we open it, our settings are there for us already. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and share. Also, if you want similar content, I'm going to try to be as regular as possible with this type of content. So subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know whenever we have new content up. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.